What numbers do we want to see do go over on the chart height? Yeah,
in SOL 7E, this is really just evaluating, and this looks different. So you would take each x value, put it in to the equation, to the expression equation, yep, and then find both y values and write them in order. So 82, 325, those would be the two y values. All of SOL 8 was um, direct and inverse variation. So you had to remember what those equations look like and how to solve them. So for number 1, it says varies inversely. So we have to remember that that's our dividing, k over usually x. So in this case, we have different variables. Or to find k, we're multiplying the two variables together. We can eliminate anything that's adding. And then the one that looks like one of those two equations is B. You could also put those into Desmos using X and Y and see which one makes the curve shape, hyperbola. Then it asks how many days would it take 60 workers. You could do this a couple different ways. Use the equation you have with the number given and solve to get about two days. Or if you have these in this in Desmos, put in w equals 60 or x equals 60, and it would cross at about two days. For number two, similar, but this one's asking about directly proportional. So you would have to know that that's your um, k equals y over x, or y equals kx, using different variables here. Again, we couldn't add. But you would need to find your k value here in order to see which of these it is because it looks the same a format. But C was your answer there. I'm sorry, it wasn't B. I don't know why I said that. I think it was in this. B was your answer. And then for number three, to create a direct variation using two ordered pairs, if you divided each set, um, you would see that they have the same k value, or if you put it into decimals, you could see those all would fall on the same line. Let's go on to the next page. Number four, you had to identify the equations that were direct, and that was just those three. Those were in the form y equals kx. Number five, the graph that was a direct was only the line that goes to the origin. And then number six was the same. The line that goes to the origin would be your direct. Seven A was the same as four, looking for uh, points that would give you the same K value which were 416, 312, and negative 2, negative 8. And then go on to the next page. Uh, part B, I just re-put the order pairs up there, so you don't need to write that part, but for the answer, inverse, it was these three, negative 4, 3, negative 6, 2, and negative 1, 12. So you had to multiply to get that number. 8, uh, which of these would be direct if we divided or put them into Desmos? 3.57, 4, 8, and 8, 16 would all give you the same K value. Then for 9 and 10, you have a plot points. You only needed two of these points that I have, but any of these two would work if you want to graph them all. Just put any two, that's fine, or if you just want to make sure you have two points, that's also fine. 10, there were more, but you needed three points. Eleven starts off with the T 
table, but then it doesn't ask the question. 13 is, or 12 is actually the question, so go on to that page. I just copied the table here. Um, so if you were testing this, if you divide it, you don't get the same thing, but if you multiply, you do. So that would be inverse, and then you have to know that this is the inverse. And then S well nine was your line of best fit and curve of best fit. The curve quadratics we haven't talked about yet. We're doing that next class. But um, those weren't formative. Some of those weren't formative. So for the first one, if you would put these in, you would see it makes a parabola shape, so it couldn't be linear. And then you could put those two in and see which one matches best. And B would be that answer. Uh, number two was line of best fit, so you should have been able to do that, find your equation, and then find when your x value is 5, which was b. Three was quadratic, so if you didn't get this one, that's okay. But um, once you have the quadratic curve of best fit, you could use that equation to find when x equals negative 4, what would your y value be, which would be about 2.3. And then go on to the next stage. Number four was another quadratic curve of this fit. So if you knew the equation, you could put that in. Make sure you have this written down. This was the quadratic curve of best fit. Y equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then you could use that to find the y value when x equals 8, which was, you could do that one of two ways. In Desmos, or put 8 in for your x's, and you get y equals 200. Or number five, this is something that you should have been able to do because it has points and you can see that it wouldn't be linear because it makes the parabola shape. And because it faces down, it would have to be two. For six, another quadratic curve of best fit. Once you know your equation, you could find that. The equation was y equals 2x squared plus 77x plus 50. And then you're looking for the value at the end of 13. So you can put 13 in for x or use Desmos and get 1389. And then go on to the last page. And then number seven was line invested, where you had to change the years to zero to however many years it's been, and your answer was C. All right, so today we're going to talk about exponential functions and how it looks and things like that. So with exponential functions, um, in the equation you'll see an A and a B. Those are going to be real number constants or... Um, coefficients, and exponential function is a function written in the form y equals a times b to the x power, where a does not equal zero and b is greater than zero, so it's positive, and b doesn't equal one. So here are some examples, there will be others. For now, we're going to start off with the basics. I'm going to give you a lot of this information. So here, I'm giving you your x's, I'm giving you what this would look like when I put it in for x, and then we're going to figure out the one. So because I'm putting this in for x, now our exponent rules apply. We have negative exponents. What does that tell me about this answer? What would this answer be? 
Yes. What back? You take that base, you flip it, you make the exponent positive, and then simplify. So it would be 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 3. 3 to the negative 1 would be 3. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the first, 3. And 3 squared, 9. So in your exponential functions, you'll start to see a pattern. You're multiplying by something each time. In this case, what are we multiplying by each time? Three. So when you see that, that's going to be part of your equation. That's going to tell you um, what your b value is. So you're multiplying. So to the best of your ability, plot these points and then plot the rest. Mine, because my uh, pen is thicker, the First two points kind of look about the same place. Try to not do that, but it's okay if it does look the same. So then you'll see the shape does curve, but not like a U, more like a rounded L kind of. And draw arrow, arrows at the ends. And then before we get into the characteristics, I'm going to graph this for you. Um, in this, I see that this looks like it's getting really, really close to the x-axis. Like maybe it'll cross it eventually, but it won't actually. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in your calculator and on Desmos. In Algebra 2, you actually learn about what that's called and find it and solve it, it's called asymptotes. It's a line that you get really, really close to, but never actually touch. So if I, in my calculator, ny equals type in 3 to the x power. I'm going to go into the table first and then show you what the graph looks like. So we just found some of those points. You can see it multiplying by 3, getting exponentially bigger. And then as I go backwards, they start to get exponentially smaller. However, it's so small that there are so many zeros in front of whatever number is given that eventually it just rounds itself out. Uh, sometimes you'll see it just is one number, but that's just, it's so close to that. It's so, there's so many zeros in front of whatever the decimal is, it is rounded it out to that number. But if I go to the graph, it looks like it's on the x-axis, but it's not actually. And the more I do that, it will do that forever and ever off to the left. Does not actually touch the x-axis, just get really, really close to it. So then let's talk characteristics. What is the y-intercept of this? 0, 1, right, as an ordered pair. And then we talked about domain and range of quadratics. Domain is your x values left to right, range is your y values lowest to highest. So for domain, what is the furthest point to the left? Negative infinity. And then is that positive infinity? Correct. Or in set building notation, that would be your curly brackets 
x such that x is an element of all real numbers. So again, you just need to recognize that. You don't need to do that yet. Your range was your lowest value. Smallest is just as small as in the table, but this is going to get closer and closer to zero. And because it doesn't actually touch zero, that's going to be parentheses. What about your highest? Infinity. It keeps going up. So in set builder notation, that would be y such that y is greater than zero. Right. This next part is just to see if you could kind of guess first before you actually figure it out, um, either based on the table or the graph. So 3 to the 0 0.07, I know that's going to be somewhere between 1 and 3 based on my table. If I were to graph it, it's going to be somewhere right there. What do we think that might be? And it's okay if you're wrong. We're just guessing right now. I'm going to say like 2.5. Anyone else want to guess? In your calculator, go ahead and put 3 to the 0.07. Let me know what you get. And then we are going to look at some other ones and see how they're similar, how they're different. But first, let's do number two. So, same process. We have our x's. If I were to put those in for x, what would 7 to the negative 2 be? 1 over 49. 1 over 49. What about 1 or 7 to the negative first? Seven, seven to the zero. One. Seven to the first. Seven. And seven squared. Forty-nine. What are we multiplying each time by? Seven. And then let's go ahead and graph those points. Two and forty-nine. We're not going to graph that one. It'd be way far off. So you see it's still making that same shape. The distance between the y-intercept and the next point just got bigger. So the y-intercept for this one would be zero, 1. Domain would be Start negative infinity, positive infinity. 
Just like our quadratics, this won't change. And then the range. Lowest to highest. Zero. Positive. And that set building notation will be the same. Do we want to guess again, or do we want to just figure that out and calculate it? Is that the actual answer or no. Now, my graph is also a little skewed because my hand slipped as I was connecting the dots. But this may be too high. Um, but based on my graph, I'm going to say 5. It's probably wrong. Put that in and see what it does. Now we're going to change our base to be a fraction and see what happens there. So now we have one third, same x's, what's one third to the negative second power? base and flip it, raise it to a positive 2, nine. just 9. One third to the negative 1, 3. One third to the 0, 1. One third to the first, 1 third, and one third to the second, 1 third. So what's the pattern here? Divided by first. So you're either multiplying or dividing by the same number each time. So in this case, go ahead and graph that. What's our y intercept up here? So 0, 1. Domain. So it's always still least degrees. So it's still going to be negative infinity to infinity. This keeps going in the negative left. What about your range? So even though it changed direction, everything is really still the same. Do we want to guess or just find this answer? So you can just find the answer. If you want to guess, you can say your guess out loud.
Now we're multiplying a different number to our base. So again, do one fourth to the negative second times three. Okay. What would that give us? Three and sixteen. Three times one-fourth to the negative first. One-fourth to the negative one, and then multiply that by three. Three times one-fourth to the zero. Times three. Three. Three times one-fourth to the first. Three over four, and three times one fourth to the second. Not twelve, and then graph those ones. So I'm gonna graph the negative one twelve. Assuming it's right there. What is the y-intercept of this? Three, three. What's our domain? Three. So that has 
has not changed our range.
two more. Jump to 15. Fifteen does not have any X's. You want your Y intercept, and you know that's going to be zero within the middle. And then the other X values are still going to be the same. Negative one, negative two, one, two. This is a good starting point. Now, you could do a couple different things. Either put these in, solve it by hand, or algebraically put them into your calculator and do each one, or you can put it into your calculator with this equation and one of your tables. So in your table, go ahead and type that in. And go into the table, second graph. And then we can just write those five points. So I'm just going to leave these as decimals 3.0635. Um, and then I will If you were doing it by hand, I'll start at zero. If you put zero in here, this would be one, one, two, three, four. If I put in one, 4 plus 3 is 7, and then if I put in 2, 16 plus 3 is 19. So you can do it by hand, you can do it in the calculator, you can do it in the calculator. Why intercept? Again, the base told you what that y intercept was, and there was nothing in front to multiply it to. What's our domain here? That part has not changed, but our range has. What's our lowest point? It's not zero. Where is this getting really, really close to? Where are these numbers, these decimals getting really, really close to? So it doesn't go to negative infinity, and it doesn't start or stop at zero. I put an invisible line here. It's a nice little street. It's going to get closer and closer to that line, which is at what value? So anytime you add or subtract things, that changes your range, but the highest is still infinity. In set builder notation, that would be everything above three. We're not approximating in this one, but go on to 16. That'll be the last one we do. And then again, we need our y intercept, so zero in the middle, negative one, negative two, one, two. You can either put the x's in individually by hand, I'll directly in the calculator, or put it in your y equals so you can find those y values. So I can do that.
tell me the y values you get. One tell me the zero, the y value for zero. You don't see the rest, so you have your five points. But if you want to graph more, you can add in some of the others three, zero, and four, four. Lowest value. Negative four. Negative 
four to this. Or in set builder notation, y is such that y is greater than negative. For the next 10, maybe less than that minutes, practice plus math or in the packet, J Labs. Um, if you have questions, let me know.